Okay, well, I guess this is part two of the video. Sorry about that, y'all. Um, for some reason, my internet's acting up a little bit today. So, sorry for dropping out of the room, and I hope everybody, uh, I hope this reaches everybody again. I'll, I'll know when I start seeing people come back into the room. Um, yep, and there's somebody. So, uh, hopefully you guys will find your way back in here. Sorry about that. I don't know. Technical difficulties, I'll just blame it on that tonight. Okay. So, um, I was talking about sayings from back home in Pennsylvania. Uh, sayings that the Pennsylvania Dutch have. Um, well, the one thing that kind of drives my wife crazy, one of the things that kind of drives my wife crazy, is when I say something is all. Okay? When I say something is all, that means it's done. There is no more of it. Like, hey, honey, the milk's all. And she'll look at me and or yell back to me, what do you mean, it's all what? Well, it's all gone. Well, then say it's all gone. Well, we don't do it that way. We say, oh, the beer's all. That means there's no more of it. Um, when something's finished, the milk's all, the sugar's all. Um, we just don't put that all gone on it. It's just, it's all, okay? <laughs> Another one is when, um, when you read something up. Um, you might say to your kids, hey, go to your room and read it up. What that means is pick up the room, okay? Make it ready. Clean up your room. Read it up. Um, and uh, one more I'll give you, okay? Um, Rookie. When a child cannot sit still, like in church on Sunday morning when he's rooching around or he's all rookie. He's, he's squirming in his pew, okay? Or he's squirming in his seat. Um, we have a lot of different sayings like that. And, well, my, my Midwestern wife sometimes knows what I'm talking about. And sometimes she doesn't. But it's all good. Yeah, no, honey. Uh, Ashley's asking. My daughter in Indianapolis is asking, was there a problem with the live or just me? No, honey, I had a problem with the internet. It dropped out on me tonight for some reason. I don't know why. It's not storming or anything like that. It was just a weak signal, okay? So it's good to see a lot of you are back in. I think we had, or the counter said we had eight people in the room uh, when it dropped out, and now we're back up to five. So hopefully most of you are back in. And if you missed any part of it, uh, this will be on. You can go back and pick it up later if you want to or... Eh, you don't have to. It's all right. We were just talking about sayings, uh, Pennsylvania Dutch sayings, or things I grew up saying that drive my wife a little crazy. So, the reason I go over that is because the devotion talks about a saying, okay? But before we get to that, why don't we go ahead and read our scripture for tonight. If you have your Bibles along with you and you want to follow along, we're in, we're in the book of Psalms. We're looking at Psalm 17. So if you have your Bibles along uh, with you and you want to follow along, that's awesome. If not, don't worry about it. I'm going to read it to you anyway. So sit back and relax, okay? Lord, hear me begging for fairness. Listen to my cry for help. Pay attention to my prayer because I speak the truth. You will judge that I am right. Your eyes can see what is true. You have examined my heart. You have tested me all night. You question me without finding anything wrong. I have not sinned with my mouth. I have obeyed your commands. So I have not done what evil people do. I have done what you told me. I have not failed. I call to you, God, and you answer me. Listen to me now and hear what I say. Your love is wonderful. By your power, you save those who trust you from their enemies. Protect me as you would protect your own eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. Keep me from the wicked who attack me, from my enemies who surround me. They are selfish and brag about themselves. They have chased me until they have surrounded me. They plan to throw me to the ground. They are like lions ready to kill. Like lions, they sit in hiding. Lord, rise, rise up, face the enemy, and throw them down. Save me from the wicked with your sword. Lord, save me from your power. 
excuse me, save me by your power from those whose reward is in this life. They have plenty of food. They have many sons. They leave much money to their children. Because I have lived right, I will see your face. When I wake up, I will see your likeness and be satisfied. Hmm. And it ends at verse 15. I was ready to keep on going, but that goes into the next psalm. So, there you have it. Psalm number 17. And the devotion from the Lutheran Christ in Our Home devotional. The devotion is entitled, Guard Me as the Apple of Guard me as the apple of the eye. And the devotion writer writes, It's a phrase we understand, an old one used not infrequently in the English language. You are the apple of my eye. We know it means to be one who is cherished above all others, but apple, eye? What does that even mean? The oldest uses of this phrase are found in scripture and originally referred to the pupil. The phrase was an anatomical term, meaning that the focus, the focus of one's eye is on that which is cherished the most. To be the apple of one's eye meant that the pupil was fixed on the one that was the most beloved. The psalmist is asking to be the beloved to be under the gaze of God, to have all of God's attention. It is a cry that we can share when, like the psalmist, we are in great distress. Take heart. God indeed loves God's creation as children, and you, yes you, are the apple of God's eye. And the prayer tonight is thank you for loving me with such great love, O God. Amen. And the prayer concern tonight is for opticians, op, <laughs> not opticians, 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 and their staff. <laughs> Man, I jumble all over my words, don't I? Um, oh, well. I'm sure you guys have experienced that a time or two. So there we have it, uh, the devotion for tonight. And now it's time to switch over to our prayer list. And we're on Monday and we take the prayer list and we, we break it down into kind of bite-sized chunks, right? So here's to you. Tonight we start with uh, Eleanor, uh, who's asked us for prayers for Jim and for her grandson, Eric. And Eleanor, we join you in praying for both of them. Kim has asked us to pray for Vera, who had a stint in the hospital in Chicago. And I continue to ask for prayers for my mom as she continues to heal. And um, well, as her numbers are starting to come back in line. Let's see, and John. Uh, John has asked us to pray for Leah, um, who has MS and COVID. And hopefully she's on the mend. It's been a couple of weeks now that we've been praying for her. So hopefully she's on the other side of that. As well as Rich and Maggie. Rich, again, we're on the other side of it. So hopefully they're recovering well. Okay. So let's do one more check to see who did manage to come in the room, back in the room. here. Oh, Sheila says live quit here also. Maybe it was something just with the, with the internet. I don't know. But uh, yeah, it just... It just really quit here. Patsy Jarvie is in. Hey, Patsy, good to see you. Max Klein. Max, watching from Ann Arbor. Hey, man, good on you. He is a freshman at U of M. It's good to have. And Debbie Milkey found her way back in the room. Thanks, Debbie. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened there. And Ashley. Uh, let's see. D Falk is back in. Good to see you guys. The ITs are here. And Chris is back in. And Jenna. So. I'm glad most of you were able to get back in. It looks like um, looks like there were some some issues with the internet. Who knows? And Kevin Iteen is in too. Hey, I saw Kevin today at lunchtime uh, while I was waiting for Paula so we could go have lunch together. It's good to have that little talk with you, Kevin. Just just a brief passing in the parking lot. Said hey. <laughs> so now we turn our attention. Once we've done our devotion, we've done our check in, we've done our praying. 
Now we turn to the nightly office. Um, it is called Compline. We say the office or the time set aside for prayer. Uh, it is from the Episcopal tradition. And the Episcopalians picked it up from the Benedictines. And I'm trying to get to that right page here. And it is a monastic discipline of setting aside certain times of the day and saying the office or the set of prayers. Okay? So tonight is Monday, August 31st, and we are beginning with the invitatory. The Lord Almighty grant us a peaceful night and a perfect end. Amen. Psalm number 31 is the psalm appointed for this evening's office. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me. O Lord, O God of truth. And the lesson tonight is taken, or comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And now in the words our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the collect, be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this life may rest in your eternal changelessness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. And the catechal is the song of Simeon. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Guide us, waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. And for those of you who will be joining us who use this as part of your morning devotion, uh, let me say a morning prayer for you guys. Holy Father, thank you for loving me, for walking with me and caring about the smallest details of my life. Fill me with grace, Lord, that I may have the strength to face what is before me today. I know not what today will bring forth, but make me ready, Lord, for whatever it may be. Please give me your wisdom and fill me with your peace. May I show the same grace to others that you show to me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And now, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Hey, my pop came in the room too. Hey, Dad, good to see you. Good to see you. I was talking about um, sayings tonight. Um, so I'll challenge you guys. You can either leave a comment now or even after this broadcast is over, you can write a comment in. Mike Tadavito came in from New York. Hey, man, good to see you. If you guys grew up with a particular saying, um, something that was common in your family, put it down here. Put it in the comments even after this broadcast is over. Because we all go back and read them. Well, I go back and read them. And I answer some people. And the conversation continues. That's the good thing about this, this resource that we have. Okay? And I do want to let everybody know one more thing. Um, Sunday, we got word. 
that the young man that we've been praying for, the 17-year-old with cancer, his name is Ryan. Um, Ryan was put on hospice, I believe, on Friday, and Ryan did pass on Sunday. So I'd like to end tonight with a special prayer uh, for Ryan, his family, and his friends who loved him deeply. Holy and gracious God, thank you, Father, for allowing us the time and the privilege to spend this life with very special people. Father, you know of the issues that Ryan was facing in his life, this young man, and you know that the people around him are, are asking why. You know, Father, I don't have a great answer for that, but I do know that nothing happens outside of you and that right now, this young man is, is cared for and loved and feels no pain. And, well, Father, may his soul and the souls of all the departed, through the mercy of God, forever rest in peace. Amen. Well, that's it for tonight. Oh, and Darren sneaked in right at the last minute. Hey, good evening, brother. Good to see you, too. So that's, uh, that's the broadcast for tonight, guys. Sorry it was in two parts there. Something happened on the internet, and it went all kaflooey, okay? Um, but we managed to get through it, okay? Well, be safe, be well, and um, love each other. Mm. Most of all, love God with all your heart. And good Lord willing, and the crypt don't rise. Like Pop says, um, I'll be right here tomorrow night. Hopefully no hiccups then. No promises, though. It is the internet after all. So until then, have a great night and a great tomorrow. Good night, Facebook.